to invite me to a land in Dallas, Texas at Paul Quinn College. We get up close with FedEx and they share the importance of their involvement with the HBCU Empowerment Tour. And we get to post to the people regarding the impact of the presidential election and the Empowerment Tour in their community. Plus, we get one-on-one with Paul Quinn President Michael Terrell as he discusses the significance of the Empowerment Tour stopping at Paul Quinn College and the challenges he faces as its new president. And inside the tour zone, we talk to area high school students about education and their future. And in today's spotlight... And my industry is all about putting out false evidence. Like on my TV show, CSI New York, the people aren't really dead. Right? They look dead, but as soon as they yell cut, they get up, go eat some food, crash service, get something to drink, and then they come back. So they've been made up. So look, it's false evidence, but it appears real. Get out your iPhones, because the self show on Empowerment TV starts now. Hey, you're up close with FedEx, and I'm talking to Dondra, right? Yes, it's Dondra. How Dondra, are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing... So talk to us a little bit about FedEx involvement in Empowerment Tour and why that's so important. Well, it's very important for FedEx to be involved, especially in this Empowerment Tour. FedEx has had a long history of supporting historical black colleges, the United Negro College Fund. So it just would behoove us not to actually continue that legacy and continue to support the black colleges. Okay. Now, what are some of the things, that, the goals that you think FedEx is having you know, for this Empowerment Tour and the HBCU community as a whole? Well, overall, FedEx believes education is important. I mean, it is actually, education helps support and actually elevate a lifestyle. And what we have done, and because we believe that, um, in 2009, we've committed to actually giving five four-year scholarships. Wow. So to that, to the United Negro College Fund. So that goes along to what we are supporting. Mm-hmm. Now, how, how do you think students, the impact your involvement as a corporation and UNCF involvement as an organization has on the HBCU community uh, and the students that participate? Well, you know what? I can look at that from my personal perspective. Mm-hmm. I actually am a graduate, graduate, if I can say, from a historical black college and university. And because I work for an organization that supports that, it really is dear to my heart Mm -hmm. that we are actually taking the steps out and saying, you know what, we're going to support the community and support um, the actual United Negro College Fund and say, uh, work as a large organization, we're going to diversify money into this area. Okay, okay. And and how important is it for our young people who attend HBCUs to be a part of something, you know, so significant as the Empowerment Tour and a a corporation like FedEx? It's very important. I always like to encourage young people to get involved Mm -hmm. and to actually actually show their face and actually get in, see what big corporations are doing. I mean, because a lot of times when you get out of college, right. you want to say, who do I want to work for? Who supports me? And FedEx is definitely an organization that, you know, reaches out and wants to um, encourage minorities to come aboard. Up Close is brought to you in part by FedEx. FedEx, the world on time. Tell me about what you experienced today here at the Empowerment Tour. I think it's a fabulous opportunity for young and old to really connect with um, le- and learn about how we should better our future. Um, Mr. Hill had a lot, a peripheral of ideas for us, um, and I, I think it's amazing. I'm in my 30s, and um, in California, uh, I, that's where I reside, uh, it's an opportunity for me to you know, refresh um, as I'm looking for a new house at this point. I'm I'm well into my career. Um, And he he touched on all that. And so I'm really excited to read his book, um, Back on the Plane, Back to California. And I think it's a refreshment for for myself, but um, an opportunity for young people to learn as well. We need to start young. How will you take what you get, gather here today and apply it to what you're trying to do? Because I heard you ask about uh, you have an organization that you're trying to start. How, how will you take what you've gathered today and apply it to what you're trying to do? Again, all the information that he gave is information that we need pretty much to be successful in life. I want to make sure that I put together a program that helps us do that. 
uh, that literally takes the person by the hand and walks them through every aspect because traditionally if you don't come from that background information is just information until you execute it how do you do that a lot of people don't know how to do that so we want to make sure we come in and give them the help that they need to make sure that they can execute proper information in order for them to be successful the reason I decided to go to a historically bad college was because I had the opportunity to visit one prior to on a spring break during graduation and I just saw the camaraderie of the students on the campus and I just thought that it would be a good fit for me especially Paul Quinn College it's a smaller setting and I just felt that it would have been such a great uh, opportunity to come and get education in a smaller setting let's talk about the uh, presidential election oh man what impact do you think that's going to have on you as an African-American woman? Well, I think, first of all, it gives us the opportunity that a woman is able to be seen. If you look at Michelle Obama, first of all, there is not a, a time in history where I think that a first lady is that of her intelligence that we've seen, especially being a black woman. It's not that she just stands next to Barack and, oh, I'm, I'm Barack's wife, but she's very smart for herself. She, I mean, she graduated from... Spelman, I believe, and, and, and she's, I mean, she's from Chicago. She's from my city. So, I mean, first of all, it's just to see that, just to see a woman of her strength and of her character and have a great family. I mean, her family, like, they're very, very close. That's an exciting thing. I mean, and second of all, I mean, what can I say? I mean, Barack was my senator. I helped him when he was running for state senator. And it's just an exciting thing because I don't think it's just a thing of, um, oh, we have our first black president. But now it's an opportunity where us as black people, we're able to be seen more. We're able to know that we have to do more in order to be what it is that we want to be. We're the Red Queen College, and you're watching Empowerment TV. Tell us what impact you think this particular empowerment series had on you uh, and your students. Oh, well, I think it was a wonderful opportunity for our students. It, it gave them an opportunity to meet someone of the caliber of Hill Harper, but also created an occasion for us to have more of the community interact with our students. So all those things made it an absolutely wonderful experience for our kids. What, what are some of the things you think your students took away from today's um, empowerment series? Well, one of the things, and it was interesting because some of the students text messaged me during his speech when he talked about having your own personal board of directors. And they were asking us, will you be on our board of directors? So I think I just picked up about four or five new posts. But that seems to be the message that has resonated the most with the kids. And why did you think Paul Quinn accepted the invitation for the Empowerment Tour to come here? Well, look, this is what we are supposed to do, right? We're supposed to provide opportunities for our students to engage, interact, and expand their consciousness. And when you see things like this and an opportunity to partner with a wonderful organization like UNCF, how do you say no? Now, you, I'm sure, where were you doing the election this past week? I was with my kids. We, uh, we do those things on campus together. What impact do you think Barack becoming the president will have on the future of American, African Americans in, in, you know, HBCUs? You know, one of the things I've heard people say is that now it's now possible for my child to be anything. I can tell them that. I just think that's ridiculous, right? You should have been telling your child that prior to him winning. But what you should tell your child is that if you go to school, do your work, develop your mind, put yourself in a position where you can make a positive impact, then you too can become President of the United States. It is wonderful that Barack won, but he won because he is a Harvard-educated, Ivy League-minded individual who, frankly, just blew away John McCain, who, you know, graduated at the bottom of his class, you know, at the Naval Academy. You've matched them up, and you could tell the difference, substance, non-substance. That's the message. Now, what are some of the things you think, what are some of the challenges you think you have here at, at a smaller HBCU as opposed to other presidents? Well, funding is obviously an issue. We have a smaller student enrollment in part because we decided to take a hard line and stress academics. So we pushed out students who weren't serious and committed about becoming better students. So our message is we're changing our brand. Our brand now is we're going to be one of the best small schools in America, and we want students who are prepared and willing to come on that journey with us. And future goals? What are some of the things you hope to accomplish while you're at Paul Quinn? Uh, we're going to become one of America's great small colleges, period. That's our only goal. You got a real job. Interview. Brock. Sponsor. Let's get inside. The Tour Zone. So, what makes... Deontay unique as a person? I'm different from all my friends. Education is very important to me, mm -hmm. so 
That's that's how my personality is good. I have a good personality. Everything. Are you nervous? Yes. Now, and what makes you unique as a person? Oh, I don't know how to say no. I don't know if that makes me unique or not, but I just don't say no just all the time. Say. I just don't know how to. I'm trying, though. I'm trying to learn how to be mean. Trying to upgrade you. Stern. No game. I'm sitting down with Cedar Hill's best, right? Yes, sir. Cedar yes, Hill's sir. best, man. This is Brian. Uh-huh. We only empowered me to at Park Quinn College in uh, Dallas, Texas. And, man, let's talk about, I'm pretty sure you plan on going to college, right? Yes, sir. What's some of the colleges and schools that you, you're thinking about right now? Well, one of the ones I really wanted to go to was UT. Okay. My mother, she went there, you know. And I find this would be a great opportunity for me as a young black male, you know. I mean, I can now I can say I can be anything I want to. Right. You know, now that we have an African American president, you know, and that really motivated me. So yeah, I really want to go to college, and UT is one of them, one of my choices. Okay. But I've been looking at Paul Quinn because I have a couple uncles that went here, and they say it's a great college. But you never know. Right. Those are my two choices. Okay. And what's some of the things you think the system is lacking overall as, as it relates to education with our young people? Understanding. I think that a lot of times, you know, the, the hip-hop community have been saying it for a long time, there's a generation gap. Mm-hmm. And so if we try to raise our kids the way that we were raised, sometimes we miss the mark. Mm-hmm. We have to, you know, come up to their level, make them, we have to understand that they're little people, that right. they're just young. And, and we have to fill them on their level in order to help them to get where we want them to be. So once you leave Park Quinn, what are you going to do? you going to try to go be a CPA? Or? I'm going to grad school at Prairie View or either Clark Atlanta or Howard. Okay. Then I'm going to study the CP, for the CPA exam. Then work as a CPA for a major corporation. Mm-hmm. And then work my way up to being a uh, chief financial officer. Okay. And they always um, try to encourage us, and you get that one-on-one reaction with the teacher or interaction with the teachers. Um, they help us out a lot, actually. Like I have a good relationship with my biology teacher, and she tries to keep us focused on everything that we do, even in other classes. And they try to help us out more to me. Okay. You've been inside the tour zone. Hey, if you want to be part of the UNCF HBCU Empower Me Tour featuring actor and best selling author Hill Harper, log on to empowermetour.org for more information or to register for the tour zone. Experience red carpets, photo ops, interviews, prizes, sponsors, and more all in the tour zone. Register today by logging on to www.empowermetour.org. So log on and check out the Empower Me Tour schedule today and see when we're coming to an HBCU near you. Don't miss your your chance to be in power. Lights, camera, action. It's time for the spotlight. Now, I, I actually come out from a little different point of view. I believe that every single choice each and up in this room, each of us in this room have made in our lives up until now, have led us to be in this place at the same time. Right? Sales library. You change one choice, you're not here. I change one choice in my life, I'm not here. But all of us, have made choices that have led us to be right here. What do you think the number one thing is that stops us from actually achieving our goals and dreams? What is it back there? Fear, exactly. She's very smart in the back. Now for me, fear stands for false evidence appearing real. Fear is false evidence appearing real. And and my industry is all about putting out false evidence. Like on my TV show, CSI New York, the people aren't really dead. Right, they look dead, but as soon as they yell cut, they get up, go eat some food, a craft service, get something to drink, and then they come back. So they've been made up to look. It's false evidence, but it appears real. Hey, join us next time as the Empowerment Tour lands in Nashville, Tennessee. First place of country music at Fitz University. We're getting up close with American Airlines. We're going to have your post to the city. Somebody's going to get the one-on-one with Hill Harper. Plus, we're getting inside the tour zone. And, of course, we got your Empowerment Moment in the spotlight. All that and more next time on The Self Show right here on Empower Me TV. UNCF presents Empower Me TV, brought to you in part by The Self Show, your number one source for talking entertainment for teens and young adults, giving a voice to those without one.